All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds, who says in his ever glorious book, My Lord has guided me to a straight path, an upright religion, the faith of Abraham, a man of pure faith. He was not a polytheist. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and that our master Prophet Muhammad is his valerie and messenger, who said, I have been sent to perfect good manners. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his household, companions, and upon those who follow their path till the day of judgment. The glorious Quran is rich with many verses that foster good manners and moral values. Indeed, there are full surahs that establish the ground of a society that's based on lofty human values, such as Surat Al-Hujurat, which calls for many values, including ascertaining the authenticity of news, especially when such news is related to public affairs. The Almighty Allah said, believers, if a troublemaker brings you news, check it first in case you are wrong with others unwittingly and later regret what you have done. Islam builds everything on certainty. In the story of Prophet Solomon, peace be upon him, and the Hopo, when the latter told the Prophet Solomon about the sun worshippers, describing the news as certain, Prophet Solomon did not, did not take his speech for granted. Rather, the Quran tells us that the Prophet said, we shall see whether you are telling the truth or lying. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, also said, it is enough sin for a man to relate every, everything that he hears. Once upon a time, a man related to Omar ibn Abdul Aziz something bad about another man. Omar ibn Abdul Aziz said, if you are a liar, then you are subject to the Quranic verse, believers. If a troublemaker brings you news, check it first. And if you are truthful, then you are subject to the Quranic verse, a backbiter and slander monger. If each of us pays attention to ascertain the authenticity of any news before relating it, rumors would disappear. Among these values are avoiding backbiting. The Almighty Allah says, do not speak ill of people behind their backs. Would any of you like to eat the flesh of your dead brother? No, you would hate it. So be mindful of Allah. Allah is ever relenting, most merciful. Abu Huraira narrated that the Prophet, peace be upon him, asked the companions, saying, Do you know what is backbiting? They said, Allah and his messenger know best. Thereupon the Prophet said, Backbiting implies talking about your brother in a manner which he does not like. It was said to him, what's your opinion if what I say about my brother is true? He said, if what you say of him is true, you in fact backbited him. And if that is not in him, it is a slander. Moreover, a person is required to defend his brother in his absence. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, if a Muslim defends his brother's honor in his absence, Allah will protect his face from the fire of hell on the day of resurrection. Among these values is also av avoiding defaming one another. This applies when such defaming is done with words or actions. The Quran prohibits such conduct, saying, woe to every fault-finding and backbiter. This covers those who defame people or give them bad nicknames. Abu Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with him, is reported to have said, when we were ordered to give alms, we began to work as porters. That's to earn something we could give in charity. A man came with one half of asar, that's a special measure for food grains, and another person brought more than he did. So the hypocrites said, Allah is not in need of the alms of this. And this other person did not give alms, but for showing off. Then Allah revealed, those who criticize 
such of the believers who gave charity voluntarily and those who could not find to give in charity except what's available to them. It also includes, it includes not to laugh at others. A true believer should not laugh at others. Allah Most High says, O you who believe, let not one people laugh at another people. Perchance they may be better than them. Nor let women laugh at other women. Perchance they may be better than them. And do not find fault with your own people, nor call one another by nicknames. Evil is a bad name after faith, and whoever does not turn these, it is that they are who are unjust. So our religion prohibits us from that, that which harms other people. One of the main traits of the true Muslim is that he should not harm others. He should be a source of good and benefit for mankind. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, bans all that which harms people's feelings, either in words or actions or with sign. In truth, the Prophet, peace be upon him, used to encourage all that which elevates man. In this connection, Umm Musa narrated that Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was once mentioned in the presence of Ali, who highlighted some of his virtues and then said, when one day Abdullah ibn Mas'ud climbed a tree and his legs became visible. His legs were very skinny, so the companions started laughing. The Prophet asked, what are you laughing at? We said, we laugh at his skinny legs, O Messenger of Allah. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, by the one in whose hand is my soul, his legs will be heavier on the balance on the Day of Judgment than Mount Uhud. With that said, I ask Allah for forgiveness for me and for you. All praise due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him and his household and companions. Muslim brothers, one of the greatest values highlighted by Surah al hujurat is strengthening the, bond, the bonds of fraternity and reconciliation among mankind. Allah Most High says, the believers are but brothers. Therefore, make peace between your brothers and be careful of your duty to Allah that mercy may be had on you. So reconciliation is one of the greatest values promoted by the Noble Surah and called for by our purified religion that lays down the foundations of a coherent, tolerant human society where the value of coexistence is promoted in an atmosphere of love and affection. As far as family is concerned, the Quran instructs us to send those known for righteousness in case of a conflict between a husband and his wife and who are able to settle down this dispute. Allah glorified he, Allah the glorious says, and if you fear a breach between the two, then appoint a judge from his people and a judge from her people. If they both desire agreement, Allah will affect harmony between them. Surely Allah is knowing and aware. The spirit of reconciliation extends to include the entire society so that reconciliation would prevail in it. In this regard, Allah Most High says, there is no good in most of their secret counsels except in his who enjoins charity or goodness or reconciliation between people. And whoever does this seeking Allah's pleasure, we will give him a mighty reward. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, highlights the great reward prepared by Allah for reconciling between people, saying, Shall I not inform you of what's more virtuous than the rank of fasting, prayer, and charity? They said, yes, of course. He said, making peace between each other. For indeed, the spoiling relations with each other is the eraser of religion. So the true believer makes reconciliation among people a way of life. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, Some people open the door to good and close the door to evil. And some people open the door to evil and close the door to good. Glad tidings are given to those in whose hands Allah places the keys to good. And woe to those in whose hands Allah places the keys to evil. O Allah, guide us to the best of manners. 
for no one guides to the best of them but you. And protect us from bad manners, for no one can protect from bad manners except for you. And keep our country and all world countries safe and secure.